The passage of time. We have shared your joy at the birth of your children, and proudly we have watched them grow. We've taken care of your health care needs during the good times and the not so good. Your parents and grandparents have depended upon us. Together we have shared the struggles and the wonders of life. At Octibaha County Hospital, we are celebrating 30 years of being your lifelong choice in health care. Section F to add a subsection three, which would be a request for authorization for the mayor to sign a memorandum of understanding to MDOT to initiate a new project under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act in order to expend remaining funds on previously approved federal routes. <coughs> Is there any objection? Any objection? All right, seeing none, note the change to the agenda on page four. Uh, and the next is to uh, strike a public appearance on page two. Uh, public appearance by John Maynard. Uh, some of you may already know, uh, John Maynard was in a car accident. I don't think there's any serious uh, health concern, but uh, he, he is going to be unable to make it. Uh, this evening. And Mr. Mayor, we can reschedule that whenever he's physically able. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any objection? Any objection? Any further revisions? To this? <coughs> Any further proposed revisions? Mr. Mayor, I've got a couple that I want brought off consent agenda if possible. Okay. Uh, first is on page two in the mayor's business uh, B. Okay. The second would be on page three. F, consideration, no, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. Um, G, consideration of calling for public hearing on the sprinkler ordinance. Yeah, I think that one was already taken off. It was. Okay. Are there any others? And the last would be page four. Section F, number two, that's the American Recovery and Reinvestment Project. I had one question on that, so if I can get that off of consent. Section F, number two. All right. Alderman Carver has removed items 9B and item F2 on page four from the consent agenda. Alderman Carver, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, are there any other proposed revisions to the agenda? Mr. Mayor, one thing on the consent agenda, we just need to add something I'm looking for. On page number three, item E, and I'm proposing for it to remain on the consent agenda, we just need to make sure we add the words uh, that these funds to come from the ending fund balance. That's on the staff notes, to come from the end, said funds to come from the end fund balance. You can just put that in the appropriate place, but you want to make it clear it comes from the ending fund balance. That was All in right. staff notes. Alderman Perkins <clears throat> has proposed to revise the agenda to add uh, coming from ending fund balance uh, to section E on page three. Is there any objection to that revision? Any objection? Any objection? <clears throat> All right. Seeing none, please note the change and the 
carpool. Add that accordingly and blend it to the consent agenda. Any further proposed revisions? Any further proposed revisions? Seeing not a motion to approve the agenda would be in order. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Dumas to approve the agenda as revised. Do I hear a second? Second. <coughs> motion has been seconded by Alderman Vaughn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Is there any objection to the consent agenda as written? Any objection? Any objection to consent? Seeing none, consent agenda is approved as well. Next order of business is the August 18th minutes. Discuss it. Mayor move. Board, move approval of minutes of August 18th, 2009. Alderman Corey has made a motion to approve the minutes of August 18th, 2009. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Sistrock. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. We'll now move into announcements and comments. And I would first like to introduce our two newest city employees. We have Kendall Pyatt and Michael Edwards. And both of these men have recently <coughs> joined us as firefighters. And uh, I must tell you, they are very impressive uh, young men. I've had the opportunity to learn a, a, a bit about each of them and <coughs> would like to, to share uh, some of their backgrounds with you. Kendall graduated from Lee Summit High School in Lee Summit, Missouri, and has been very busy since then. Kendall went to Texas Christian University, where he was a two-year letterman in track and field. Then he came to Mississippi State, where he continued uh, in track and field, and he also majored in physical education. Uh, Kendall was an All-American and a Mideast Region uh, and an All Mideast Region track and field athlete at Mississippi State. In addition, he is a, a National Dean Scout. He completed his bachelor's in PE and is continuing his education at Mississippi State. <clears throat> he also has been working as an athletic academic intern, helping make sure that uh, all of the athletes are on pace with their academic progress uh, in the Mississippi State Athletic Program. Kendall has grown to enjoy the Starkville area and plans to make this his adopted home. Michael Edwards is from Starkville and is glad to be back home after serving four years in the Marines. And his stint in the, Marine include, in the Marines includes two deployments to Iraq. While in the Marines, Michael gained exposure to training in firefighting and served as a fire team leader in addition to being a saw gunner. Locally, Michael has worked in the construction field before enlisting in the Marines and since returning in July. During his interviews, Michael said he wanted to be a firefighter because he wanted to do a job that mattered. Michael, you have certainly been in a position that mattered in the Marine and we as in the Marines and we welcome you to another position that matters to your services with the fire department. I also want to tell you all that I had a chance to uh, go over for a bit uh, when uh, the uh, new applicants for uh, the firefighter positions that were open were uh, completing the physical portion of the application at Fire Station 3. It was a very, very impressive exercise, and uh, these two young men represent the, the very best and the brightest of, of an extremely qualified uh, pool of applicants. Uh, we are glad to have you aboard. Welcome. Thank you. And I've got one more announcement. Uh, did everybody get the worksheet for the, the retreat is at your desk. Our retreat uh, is, is upcoming on January 21st and 22nd, and you'll recall when we were talking about this last month, I said I would like to get some feedback from you uh, and also uh, use the information you submit to help build the agenda uh, for that retreat. Uh, this worksheet is, uh, I, I guess, a a way I'd like for us to, to move forward on that. Uh, if you can take some time and uh, try to answer the questions, and if there's anything else you'd like to add that I haven't covered in those questions, please feel free to do so. And then I'll be calling each of you to set up a one-on-one -on -one so we can discuss uh, uh, what your thoughts on, on these questions and, and other things were as we uh, move forward towards that agenda, or towards the retreat. Comments from the board.
Any comments from the board? Any comments? Any comments? Seeing now, we'll move to citizen comments. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Board. My name is Alejandro Ward Hotel. Uh, uh, I'm the evening to Vice Mayor Citron and all of them. Thank you. Citizen meeting that we're at the end of the year almost. And citizens will be very frustrated. If they're not going to send out the income tax, we have to go to the computer. A lot of people are not computer people. That's what they say. It's very frustrating for people that are not computer people. Uh, uh, citizens that would uh, like to uh, uh, let hear from the city attorney. Uh, uh, to, uh, the office is made, made up over in July. And what would be things that if they do not do that job would have to step down? Further citizen comments? No, I do have some comments on to make. First of all, I would like to say good evening to the board and also to our mayor. And I would just like to say, um, as the Christmas season approaches, I would just like to thank you all for the job that you have so far demonstrated here in our city. And I had y'all a little present, but I'm telling you what happened to me this morning when I got ready to go to work. It may take more than my three minutes a little bit, but let me tell you, I had a dog in my neighborhood this morning that seemed to want to follow me to work. I didn't see him until he had knocked me down. He knocked me down, and this is what I got, you know, from him. I got some scratches on my leg. We can't seem to find the dog owner. We're still trying in the process of, you know, trying to find the dog owner. But, uh, you know, we do have, like I said, we do have policies and procedures, so I know if we go bad here, everything's going to be all right. And uh, uh, once more, I come before you, before the board. Now, we had the, uh, everything about the liquor, you know, and everything got passed. We got past that, and so far, you know, everything has been running smooth. Something that I would like to bring to the board, though, is we need a curfew. If we could look into curfews for, you know, people that are here in Starville for our young students. I was coming home one night <coughs> from Tupelo. We were coming home, and it was about 1.30. We had attended a function, and it was about 1.30 we had I'll say some little guys walking the road looked like they were about 13 or 14. And they were just walking the road at that time. And we could model after Columbus and sort of see, you know, how they got it structured up to where we would have a curfew and make somebody responsible for the children. Maybe, you know, everything would go on. And I like to say to my ultimate Perkins, a special holiday wish, because he's like a person that I can call any time and get up out the bed. You know, and talk to him about these things. I didn't call him about the dog bite, but we're gonna get, you know, we're gonna get into that after everything. But I would just like to say, please, if we could, just look into the curfew and see if we can form a committee or do something to make Starville a more possessive place for our students. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Ms. Hines. We appreciate you very much, Mr. Mayor. Alderman uh, Carson. Chief Lindley, is there an enforceable curfew right now? No. No. Further citizen comments? Are there any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to say good evening to everybody. This is my first time being on a board meeting. Oh, but I'd like to could say. Could you state your name? Rose, I'm has, sorry. Yes, my name is Rosa Smith. Mr. Mayor, let, and, uh, uh, let me ask you. I think that she's a little ahead of schedule. You, you can't. Okay. No, I just want to make a Very comment. Good. I'm sorry. It. I'm it's sorry. Just, Excuse it's me. something that concerns me I'm about sorry. the city of Star. And I got the opportunity, and I realized what it was, Thank and you. I just Thank got you. up to say something. Thank you. We appreciate it. And the thing I come, I, I stood up to say, it was about the law, the loud music, and you know that wakes you up when you're sleeping at night. I live uh, on North Montgomery, and there's all time, all all time through the night, we got boom, 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 boom. It wakes you up out your sleep if you're trying to rest, and uh, that is con is a concern to me for the city that I'm living in. Look like. It could be something or, or music ornament or something where you can get it 
where they can, you know, not have the music up so loud. And that concerns me. And that may be something that, you know, you all could work on doing. And that's all I want Thank to you, Ms. Smith. We appreciate your concerns. Further citizen comments? Are there any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Any further citizen comments? Seeing none, we'll move to public appearances. And Ms. Smith, that puts you back up. <laughs> Okay, my name is Ron Rosa Smith again, and Altima Perkin is uh, my Altima. And my concern is uh, Newsom. And my concern with the Newsom is that I have, I have pictures of my property, and I have pictures showing of what I'm talking about. The Newsom to me is, I live on 13, 1307 North Montgomery, which is going to Rocky Road. But my, my neighbor is Mr. Cook. And he has some livestock. And this livestock is, is a nuisance to me because several times they've gotten out on my property. And I have called for assistance with that. And not only that, but it brings odor. And not only brings odor, it brings flies. It brings horse flies. And it's, it's, it's about 73 feet from my back of my yard. And it's about 5 to 10 feet to my side of my house, which is a bedroom to the side of where it is. And not only do that, but I, I, uh, I am concerned not only for me, but I have uh, uh, a health wise just as well as I have asthma. And odors do affect you when you have asthma. Not only do that, my grandchildren have asthma. And it's something that is bothersome and, and it's a nuisance to me because it's bothersome to me. Because you got uh, the odor, which is stinky. Then you got hay, he got like 22 big bales of hay right next to me. And that hay, what it do, it accumulates rodents. You get, you get rats, and I don't have rats, and I don't want rats. And uh, it brings all kind of insects, mosquitoes, the whole water. And that, that, that's no good thing for nobody to be living in a, a situation such as this. And I, you know, I just want to bring to the board that it concerned me of what's going on at, around me at my resident with my neighbor. My neighbor's not a person that I can talk to. I tried once to talk to my neighbor, but he never wanted to talk to me. And that's how I got in this for. Uh, but I want, what I brought to the board is if you all could consider some kind of way of helping me with this, this situation that I have. I got trailers sitting there not being used. They're just sitting there. And then there's another little outhouse that they sell things in and out of. They sell things out of that. But the nuisance is it's an odorless and it's stinking. And then there's cows, there's bulls. And I'm concerned about my grandchildren because I have a trampoline there in my backyard. My grandchildren plays on that trampoline. And a bull, it, it don't, it don't have no control. And I, I, I don't, I, you know, and it, it concerns me of the dangers of my grandchildren just as well. Not only just me, but whoever else that come to my house. And I, you know, I don't think nobody in here would want to be in the position that I'm in. Nobody. And I just come before the board to ask you all for help. If you could consider something or doing something to help me with this situation, I would truly thank you for doing it. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Do we have any questions, comments from the board? Alden Perk. Mr. Mayor, uh, let me just make a few very, have a seat there, Ms. Smith, thank you. Let me make a very few brief comments. Ms. Smith brought this matter to my attention some weeks ago, and um, I've been out to the subject property, and I've been out there as late as 4 o'clock this evening, and uh, I have a communicate with Ms. Sproul, and if it pleases the, uh, the mayor and board, I'd like Ms. Sproul to come forward and just give us uh, her a report of her um, thorough involvement in this matter. And then, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to be recognized for a motion after uh, Ms. Sproul finishes, unless the board has something else. If Ms. Sproul can come forward and just sh uh, share uh, her information she's been out to the subject property she's talked to miss i'll let her speak to that she's talking to smith on many occasions yes sir i have uh, miss smith contacted me um, a couple months ago and we chatted about it i've talked to the animal control officer and asked him to look into it um, at the time there were cows there and then i spoke with uh, mr lyle who's our code enforcement uh, person and asked him to look at it from his perspective um, we were unable, they were unable to determine that there was a code enforcement issue or an animal control issue that they needed to handle. And so we offered Ms. Smith the opportunity to come 
file a complaint, which was then taken before Judge Turner under the Administrative Hearing Act to see if she could find from uh, the evidence presented by Ms. Smith if there was an issue that she could find a violation on that could then be uh, moved forward in the process. She was unable to find a violation um, from the evidence presented to her, and so Ms. Smith inquired what other options she might have, and I indicated to her that she could come to the board and request um, a hearing before, not a hearing, but an opportunity to speak with the board in this forum, and so obviously um, that's what she has chosen to do. I'm not quite sure what we can do, but we certainly can continue to research. The trailers are a possible, we may have a possible remedy for the trailers. Um, I will look into that further. The cows have not been there since before Thanksgiving, I believe, before Ms. Smith uh, came to Ms. Turner's, uh, to Judge Turner's uh, appeal on um, hearing process. The cows were not there, so it is a matter of the hay. And as of right now, I don't know that there's anything that we, as a city, have an option to do regarding the hay. But the trailers are possibly something that we can address, being that it is in uh, zoned R1 and trailers are not allowed in the R1 area. Uh, there are two accessory structures that uh, have been taken Mr. Griffith on a previous occasion that, that we might, uh, we have no, no ordinance that prohibits accessory structures, but the trailers are not, not necessarily. Um, allowed in that area so we'll have to look into that but other than that i don't know of anything beyond that miss smith you said something about selling something out of an outhouse yes so they sell uh <clears throat> their uh, clothing and furniture that uh i'm thinking they sell to people out of there which i think she used to own the nearly new shop um do we know if they have a license to do business there? i have no knowledge that they're making sales out there okay. I, I don't have any First-hand knowledge of that. Mr. Green, I'd like to recognize my motion. Yes, we, is it the motion that you uh, reduced to writing? You saw when you repeat repeated, you know, yes. I have a motion from Alderman Perkins that has been reduced to writing. Alderman Perkins moves that Lynn Spruill, the city's chief administrative officer, be and is directed to further investigate the matter and provide the mayor and board in writing with her findings before January 5th, 2010 and that the city will thereafter notify Ms. Rosie Smith of what action, if any, can be taken regarding her request. Yes, my motion, Ms. Mayor. Do I hear a second? Second. It's been seconded by Alderman Carver. Uh, Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on the merits of your motion? Uh, no, sir. Discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Alderman Carver. I is there any ordinance pertaining to livestock within city limits? <clears throat> there he is. That's what you'll and, uh, study yeah, and get back to. Basically, uh, that ordinance provides one of two things uh, that uh, the city staff investigated in this situation uh, that can be potentially impermissible. That is, uh, if the livestock it exceeds the maximum number of, of animals per acreage, animal control officer checked on that and that was not the case uh, in this situation. And the other occurrence uh, where, where the city may have a role is if the livestock are creating a nuisance. And that was the matter that went before uh, the administrative hearing officer and was uh, was taken up at that point in time. So, Miss Miss Mayor, must say something. So, Miss uh, Smith, what that motion does it directs Miss Sproul to further investigate that uh, this particular matter, and she's going to make her findings back to us before the next meeting, and then we'll thereafter notify you. So, we're going to continue to do what we can and. Um, Whenever you need to talk to me further, you got my cell number and just give me a call. It doesn't matter. Okay. And we'll stay on top of it. And, and whatever we can do with our shirt, you will do it if, if, okay. if we can. Okay. 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 Further discussion? Thanks. Is there any further discussion on Alderman Perkins' motion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Thank you all. All right, uh, next matter before us is the consideration of a resolution acknowledging the reporting requirements in compliance with the mandates of the American Rep Recovery and Re Reinvestment Act of 2009. Let's get to it.
in essence, what it says is that you will comply with the rules and regulations of the grant, the rules and regulations of reporting, which must be done on a quarterly basis, and a monthly basis, and an annual basis, and it's something that we've been doing since the project. Mr. Mayor, I understood, every, I, I understood everything you gave us and, and valid information. My only question was who exactly, is, just for public record, who's exactly going to be you know, required to report on the fifth of each quarter? Will it be you or will it be the CAO or who's going to be responsible for this reporting? Because I know that with this AR, ARRA there's a, a lot of legal ramifications to all the paperwork and just who exactly is going to be responsible for this? Reporting system. The planning and development district has and will continue to prepare the reports and they go out underneath the name of signature. So it is a cooperative effort, but as far as who actually does the planning and development, I gather the information and then the name of the call. Further discussion. Everything's still on track, good to go? Further discussion. Alderman Court. Oh, unless there's any other questions, I'd be willing to make a motion. Um, I would move that we go ahead and approve the resolution acknowledging the special conditions, uh, reporting requirements, um, and compliance with the mandates of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. Alderman Court has made a motion to approve a resolution <coughs> acknowledging reporting requirements and compliance with the mandates of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. Alderman Court, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Dumas. Alderman McCoy, you wish to speak on the marriage? No. Nope. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Major clearly passes. Thank you, Ms. Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your leadership on that. Thank you. And I just noticed that John Maynard uh, has uh, has made it in. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Maynard for being here under uh, what, what been very difficult circumstances. In order for Mr. Maynard to make his presentation, uh, a motion to revise the agenda uh, would be in order. Mr. Mayor, move approval. All right, motion's been made by Alderman Perkins to revise the agenda uh, to add an item D under Mayor's Business, uh, John Maynard, uh, presentation. Do we have a second? Second. second. Motion's been seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, uh, All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Mr. Mayor. It's going to take me a couple of seconds just to get set up. I guess most importantly, you're all right? I'm fine. Good. <laughs> My car's not so good, but I'm fine. Yeah. Good. Everybody else was okay? Yes. There's a uh, certain yield sign in, uh, in what, uh, West Point that doesn't look so good either, nor, nor does the landscaping around CVS. But better at West Point than that, right? That's right. I'll tell you what, while this is booting up, I want to thank you for inviting me to come and make a presentation. I'd like to show you a couple of things that we've been working on for, for the year. <coughs> uh, answer any questions that you might have about what, uh, what progress we're making. I will say that the economy is terrible. I just spent the last two days in Nashville with uh, the TVA folks. Uh, they were telling us that community preparedness is, is what we're working on now, and that's what we've been working on since I got here. Uh, there are very few projects that are 
out there really moving. We get <coughs> plenty of phone calls. Um, we are getting lots and lots of prospects that are calling us up saying they've got these projects and they're 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 not. They're they're people that are getting out getting leads on stimulus money. They've got projects that may or may not have any validity at all. Uh, they're coming to some kind of search the areas and see where they can uh, <coughs> see how they can hopefully turn what stimulus money they can find into something profitable. But uh, those are generally generally a waste of everybody's time. So the, for the most part, what we've been working on is making sure that the, the community is prepared when the, the real the economy turns around and those real calls start to happen. Uh, we've been working with MBA, with TBA, with the university uh, to, to really generate the prospect leads, let everybody know what our, our capabilities are as far as land buildings uh, and the, the sort of incentives and sort of things we can offer right here. And I apologize. I'm going to have some handouts for you. <clears throat> Just for your clarification as to what we do. We're going to start with a development partnership. Uh, first thing I'd like to point out to folks is the partnership. This is our, our description of what we do. And we're characterized by the mutual cooperation and uh, responsibility for the achievement of a specified goal. We do have four components. Number one being the Chamber of Commerce, which we consider our tactical component. Uh, they are charged with taking care of our membership, making sure that the local businesses and the, uh, the business community and the business climate here is, is what it should be. OCEDA, which we consider our strategic component, which is the securing of land, securing of, of in, uh, incentives, making sure that the, the long-range goals are, are out there to be met. Tourism, we consider that leveraging other people's money. We want people to come in from somewhere else put their money into our economy so it can continue to, uh, to circulate. And retirement. Retirement is a hybrid function of all those, those activities and that we've got for retirees what they're going to want to see here is places to live, things to do, and places to spend money. <clears throat> Some of the successes that we've had uh, in the past 12 months go with uh, Camgen Microsystems. Camgen uh, was a, had roughly 10 employees. They, they acquired the assets and the employees of Cypress Semiconductors. Cypress Semiconductors was one of our first tenants in the research park. They were going to be packing up and basically moving out. And so Cyp uh, Camgen had an opportunity to take that on, but they needed our help to be able to make that acquisition happen. <clears throat> we were able to provide incentives for them so that they were able to make this go on. Camgen is now poised to take over the top floor of the new uh, office building, multi-tenant building that's going in and out of the research park. They're growing their Department of Defense contracts going to be a company that's going to be sticking around here for a long time, and we can take great pride in the success we gave for, uh, for Cams and Microsystems. Project Alloy. Project Alloy was a company that came into uh, to Starkville more or less on a whim. Uh, I think uh, my, my thoughts of how they'd been working was they'd gone to Washington looking for some money to have some development on their project, on their, their product. Uh, the congressman there said, why don't you try Mississippi? So they came down here saying, Oh, sure, we'll do that. And when they came to Mississippi, specifically Mississippi State and Cavs, they discovered that the brain trust that we have here was able to take their product and move it, accelerate it uh, to a much higher level to something that they, they weren't prepared to do. They signed a non-disclosure agreement with Cavs. Uh, they will begin working on their, their product, to develop a product, and that will hopefully roll out into a, an actual manufacturing plant here in Starkville. Uh, significantly strengthened our relationship with NDA. Uh, it's no secret that our, our relationships outside of, of Starkville were somewhat strained and the, the, the inactivity of, uh, of my predecessor. Um, we've significantly strengthened those. 
Uh, we're making at least monthly trips to NBA. Uh, took the mayor down there to introduce him uh, to, to Gray Sword personally. Uh, if anybody else would like to go down there and see NBA and see what, what they do and what goes on there, more than happy to, to take you down there and make those introductions. The TAP report. TAP report had 17 suggested items on it. Uh, we have touched all 17. We added an 18th, which was going to be, or is, uh, create a green policy so that we're much more sustainable. Uh, every item on there has been touched. Most have been completed, or we've established a program that addresses the, the ongoing nature of that suggestion. We've been through our bylaws process. We uh, appointed a bylaws committee. We went through an entire process to re uh, spell out a little bit more what we do, what we look like, and how we operate. We, uh, we trimmed our board down from 26 to 25, and then we successfully trimmed it right back up to 27. So anyway, that's, that's kind of what we've done with the, with the, the, tap, uh, the, the bylaws. Uh, we were successful with the Super Bulldog Weekend and the Cotton District Arts Festival of, of making that a much more positive situation. With a new coach there, it just sort of happened that the, the two rolled together on the same weekend. Uh, it looked like Panic City on both sides because you know, these two, two major events for Starkville were going to be stepping on each other's toes. Uh, we helped coordinate the, the, the positive nature of that event. And it, for my, I, I think it turned out to be a, a very uh, positive weekend. We launched the Shop Starkville campaign. The Shop Starkville campaign has been very successful. We're doing a, a weekly radio show. We have TV spots, radio spots, and, and an awful lot of buy-in through the community with, uh, with getting the, the word out so that people will think about spending their money here first. And we've established some regionally cooperative groups. We, have, we did a, uh, a regional business expo with The Link and the Growth Alliance in West Point. Uh, we've established uh, active participation in projects and other uh, activities with both the link and the, with the growth alliance the um, golden triangle regional industrial aerospace park it's a mouthful uh, is one of those those actual working paper uh, agreements they they had this large project uh, they were going to be able to do whatever they wanted to do you know all, all by themselves they were going to fund it themselves they could market it themselves they could develop it themselves what they realized was in order for, to get any funding in the future, they're going to need regional participation. So they went to five counties in, in Mississippi and two counties over in, uh, in Alabama, and we signed a, a mutual cooperation agreement that this, this board is well aware of. Uh, that sort of thing is, is indicative of what we can do and where we're going to be going in the future. Uh, we developed a marketing, a new marketing, some new marketing material, which I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, that's been helped out by the North Mississippi Industrial Development Authority, or association. Uh, we're going to be taking that to the next level as we start concentrating some of the, the uh, marketing we're going to be doing for the uh, targeted industries. Uh, with the meeting I had in TVA this morning, uh, we're going to be taking that to a, a much higher level and having real marketing pieces that we can, we can email out, we can put on our website, we can carry around, we can, we can <coughs> do actual marketing with this thing and get some attention that we deserve. We've changed our tourism focus from events-based, of where we're, we, we help events get started, help events get rolling, that sort of thing, to really development-based. We want to make sure that the people that come here to visit here turn into our best salesmen, that they go out in the world and they, they come back here and tell, uh, they, they tell everybody else to come back here and spend money. Uh, that's been very successful so far. We hired Jennifer Glaze to come on as our, uh, our tourism director, and she's been very proactive. Pumpkin Palooza was one of those those events and developments that actually turned out to be a really positive event. Uh, I think most of you were there, uh, but it was something that, that I felt was ex <clears throat> extremely significant, and that we had a very family event on a game day weekend. Uh, the University of Florida was here. We had those people in blue and orange walking around saying, "Wow, what a great town!" Uh, and it, it was really tremendous. Uh, also, we have a <clears throat> reformulation of these in the strategic plan for the education committee. That's education is priority one for the for the, for the partnership. Without a good solid education base here, then we're not going to be very successful in recruiting companies here. Universities finding that companies are finding that uh, it's going to be a, a tremendous asset here for us to start pushing forward with that. What we've done with that committee is we've we've reduced it down to some very significant decision makers. We have Judy Cooey from Starkville uh, School District, James Covington from Octavia County School District, um, Doc Stevens from Starkville Academy. Uh, Randy Whitbeck from the Starkville Christian School, uh, Richard Blackburn from the, he's the Dean of the Department of College of Education, um, Harold Clark, 
uh, Lynn Richardson, who is also the dean of the business department. Among those are the, the people that we have sitting or working with our education committee. These are decision makers. We're going to be making uh, assessments of where we are. We're going to be developing plans for how we can support the education system. As of the last meeting, we had an entire page of suggestions that came out of the school system of things we can do on a community, as a community, to help support the school system and help get the test scores out. Some of the things we have in the works, excuse me, a little bit dry. Can I get some water from Barbara? Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> and I don't want to take up too much of your time here, so I'm trying to speak as fast as I can. Uh, we are going to take a more active role in regional projects. The last company that we hosted in, uh, right here in Starkville was actually a prospect that was generated by West Point. West Point had a, and it was, again, I think it was a project that was not necessarily real. I think they were just sort of testing the waters, but that nevertheless helps out. We had actual um, site selection consultants in our town seeing what we had uh, to, to understand more about where we are and what we do. But the active role in regional projects will be just that same sort of support. We'll be working with Lowndes Clay, Webster, Choctaw, uh, you, you name it. We're going to be working with our neighbors to make sure that when they need support, primarily from the assets we have here, which would be Mississippi State University, that they're going to get that support. They're going to get the support from me, and this community is going to be helping out to, uh, to make sure that our entire region grows. We are getting tracking software, actually two sets of software, to uh, help us track projects uh, and, and other successes that we have as far as membership and other things to make our, our website and to make our, our, our process much more interactive. Uh, it's going to help us with our reporting. It's going to help us with understanding what's come in and what needs to be taken care of. And again, active marketing. Uh, right now, there's nothing out there moving, uh, but it doesn't have, it doesn't hurt for us to go go after the bell cows, to go after the, the folks that, that that have the projects or will have the projects uh, on all on the retail front, on the economic development front, and on the community development front. Uh, we're going to be going out and getting our word out as much as possible. The active marketing that, I'm going to, that I personally will be doing is going to be making trips to visit with site selection consultants in Atlanta and in Dallas and in Chicago. Uh, and in fact, uh, Mayor Wiseman and I are scheduled to go, I, I believe we're still scheduled to go, uh, on January 12th to speak with, with a, a retail developer uh, who he is the real estate developer for a, a what I call a bell cow uh, retail establishment. This would be a large big box type operation that seems to bring with it lots of other smaller retail operations. Now, they have taken Mississippi off their radar for the next five years. Uh, they probably know as much about Starkville as anybody, but we're going to go out there and we're going to develop that relationship and we're going to say, you don't know us now, you don't need us now, and you're not looking at us now, but we're going to be right here and telling you that we're ready when you're ready. Uh, so it's that type of relationship that we'll be developing far and wide with everybody who we can pay to listen. The other active marketing is that I'll be down in Jackson at least once a quarter, hopefully once a month, actively uh, speaking to the project managers about any of the latest developments that are going on here in Starkville. I have found that that's a very, very, you know, I can only market so much, uh, and people are only, only going to call Starkville so much. But MBA with their, their global business side and their business retention side, <coughs> those project managers are extremely active, uh, literally around the globe. Uh, and they're the ones who are out there finding projects. If they don't know what's going on here, then I literally am not on their, their radar at all. <coughs> so we'll be actively recruiting uh, with, or working with the uh, MBA project managers to do this as well. Uh, the TVA, uh, Target Market Specialists, I'll be meeting with the entire team on January 5th to be peddling our, our community. Uh, that's working with those the people that are actively out there in the world recruiting for business and looking at, at how our community can, can better position itself to be more aggressive for these other companies is going to be something that's uh, actually going to be a whole lot of fun to go out there and market. Now, one of our big things is uh, the Pilkin property, which is about anywhere between 1,700 and 2,400, depending on where you draw the lines, but a whole lot of acreage out there uh, with single ownership, and they're motivated to do something with it. Uh, we have done some due diligence in the past. Now we want to do some active due diligence where we want to get a phase one study, uh, a, a preliminary geotechnical study, preliminary wetland study, those sort of things, so that we can actually be ready <coughs> to option the land or, or do the things that are gonna, it's going to take to go to that next level. 
uh, speaking with the TVA folks today, we can actually begin to start drawing out a master plan for that entire area and start moving forward with uh, making the plan so that something will fit. Of course, major redesign of our website. We are hiring uh, a gentleman by the name of Mark James. Mark James is a certified economic developer. He was the IT guy for uh, AEP Power. AEP Power. Uh, he is very well respected as a, uh, as a website development guy. He makes presentations far and wide. I've seen him speak three times uh, just in the short time I've been here. Uh, but we're going to hire him to write our RFP. Uh, the RFP is going to go out to local web designers and, and a little bit more broad uh, regional web, web designers. So we can hopefully keep some of that, that close to home. But it will, it will allow us to go after a website that specifically fits for what we're trying to do. We have economic development, tourism, and, and chamber of commerce. Those are three specifically different websites that have to be considered and can be put into to one website. So this person is going to help us do an awful lot of, of getting all that together. I think that's all I've got for this. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to you had requested several several things. If you'd like to ask me some questions. Um, that was very informative and um, you uh, expanded on some things, your goals and uh, your uh, plans and ideas. And, and you know, we've been talking about for some time about an indoor mall. Uh, we think there's any likelihood or chance for getting that here. <clears throat> I'll put it this way. The conversations I've had about indoor malls is probably not. And the reason being is because indoor malls are becoming a thing of the past. Uh, there are a lot of issues with them, number one being security. It costs them all an awful lot of money to, to, to develop the security in those malls. Number two, indoor malls are becoming more and more dated. Uh, so that the, the future that you're looking at is the outdoor mall. You're looking at the, the, the I'm trying to think of a, the Renaissance uh, facility in Madison. Something along those lines. I did actually on Friday. I was in Jackson with, uh, with some folks down there talking about the Cotton Mills project and other projects that can be be developed that direction. So if we're talking about retail, we're talking about large scale retail, uh, we're probably going to be looking more along the lines of an exterior mall as opposed to the interior mall. Um, it's, but as far as the retail prospects, <coughs> the economy is terrible. Uh, getting the retail prospects in here is very very difficult. Getting them to move period is very, very difficult, um, but we're going to be out marketing, we're going to be out selling, we're going to be out asking these folks, hey, hey, when you're ready, here's the demographics, here's the trends, here's the things that we're doing. You know, I, I was in a, in a conference in Reno about three months ago, it wasn't that long. There was about 200 people in that room, and the, uh, in fact, the, the guy, Rick Weddle, who runs the research park in North Carolina, the Golden Triangle, the Golden, you know, the, the big research park, and he said, is there anybody in here whose, whose sales tax are, 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 are showing positive growth? And so I raised my hand, and the exact same, same thing happened in that room as happened in this room. I was the only one with my hand up. The fact that this town has demonstrated some relatively flat and, well, positive and uh, now showing some relatively flat retail sales is huge. We can get retail uh, boxes, retail uh, centers attention by saying we can hold our own in a recession. Now the downside of that is I don't think we've actually hit the bottom of, of our site. We typically run a little bit behind where the, the rest of the country does. Uh, I think we're going to see some some more rough times ahead. But the fact that we've been fairly flat is is, is huge for us. So uh, I think we can get the attention and say that this this community can actually support the type of retail that we want and deserve. Mr. Maynard, we certainly appreciate it and very informative. I had some constituents inquire, and I think um, your information let us know that you all work very diligently trying to enhanced economic development. We want to appreciate your efforts. The passage of time. We have shared your joy at the birth of your children, and proudly we have watched them grow. We've taken care of your health care needs during the good times and the not so good. Your parents and grandparents have depended upon us. Together we have shared the struggles and the wonders of life. At Octibaha County Hospital, we are celebrating 30 years of being your lifelong choice in health care. Of course, it's in uh, the uh, planning phase of the, the construction uh, of, of, for their major renovation. And part of that is a parking garage. Uh, our sprinkler ordinance currently requires a parking garage to be uh, sprinkler. Uh, the hospital uh, essentially asked, uh, you know, is this 
something that's a necessity. Why do you do this? And uh, that uh, led to a, a, a conversation uh, amongst me and, and the city staff, uh, fire chief included. And uh, we, we came to the con conclusion, and I will let him expound on this because, of course, this is a, a, a matter of, of fire safety, uh, that uh, the, the, the sprinkler is uh, – should not necessarily be a requirement uh, on a parking garage. And again, I'll let him expound on that in, in a bit. Uh, also, he, he's got uh, other uh, potential revisions uh, to the sprinkler ordinance as it has been in practice for a couple of years uh, that, uh, that he's been uh, tooling with a little bit. So given that their timeline is pretty pressing on that project, uh, it, it, it is timely uh, for <coughs> us to take up uh, any and all uh, issues that, uh, that the fire chief uh, and, and his staff might have with the sprinkler ordinance. Uh, so, uh, Chief, I'll let you kind of expound on, on some of those issues. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. You know, in, in 2006, we started working on the, on the ordinance, trying to put something together, late 06, and then in early 07, we, we brought it to the board. Uh, and, and after some public hearings, the board uh, approved the ordinance. We knew then, uh, and we, we briefly talked about it then, that there were going to be times that, that an adjustment to the ordinance might be necessary. And we were told in talking with other cities that, that it's to expect that, that it's just impossible to plan for every scenario when you're referring to a building code. You know? And we developed the ordinance as a life safety measure. It wasn't the intention of that ordinance uh, to do anything affecting or retarding any type of construction or anything. It was a life safety. That was the reason why we brought it uh, to you, was to enhance the, the, the quality of life in Starville. And through the years, uh, the, the two and a half plus or almost three years now that, that the ordinance has been in effect, we've run across some, some things and we've been taking notes, and, and as the mayor uh, mentioned, the, the, the time we were, we were looking maybe early uh, next year that we were going to bring something up, uh, but I think it's very legitimate in what, uh, what was brought to our attention at OCH. Is, as we were doing the ordinance, it was never our intention to ask that a concrete structure uh, that has nobody in it but cars. Um, be sprinkled, and, and that's just that's the gist of why we're we're here tonight uh, is in, in asking that. But along with that, we do have some definitions that need to be added that we've been identifying over a period of time. We need to add certain definitions into it. Uh, we need to uh, we can make the the ordinance flow better and make it more easily understood by combining two sections. And uh, that, that's what we're after, is we want a, a document that enhances the life safety for the citizens of Starville, but one that's also easy to understand and, 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 and read. Mr. Neal, might be recognized. Alden Perk. Thank you. Uh, Chief, um, you, you mentioned that um, no one envisioned uh, require, having a sprinkler system required for a um, concrete structure. And I just want to be satisfied that uh, we're not compromising uh, safety to any extent uh, by uh, having this amendment uh, to the sprinkler ordinance. It does concern me some that uh, we want to make this amendment uh, on the eve uh, or the timeline there about uh, construction beginning uh, on the um, or for the hospital parking garage. And of course, I'm going to support the public hearing, but I just want you as the fire chief just to fully represent to us that. Um, that safety is not going to be compromised to any extent about doing that, and, and, and hopefully, you know, we're not just trying to accommodate uh, Octavia Hall County Hospital here. Could you address that for me? Absolutely not, Alderman Perkins. Okay. It's uh, life safety is 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 the most important thing to us, and. The he's meeting. They are they are meeting all the the codes. Actually, are going a little above the codes. Uh, in what we're we're in that parking garage, but let let me let me let me maybe better define uh, concrete building and all is 
it's it's nothing but three layers of concrete with no sides on it. I mean, it's just a you, you can imagine. In in 06, when we were talking with other cities, we had no idea that a parking garage was in store for the city of Star. And if we had, it's just like they told us, we can't plan, you won't be able to plan for everything, and this is one of the ones that's bumped us, is the parking garage. And it, it is a, uh, there's, there's plenty of life safety features in place in that garage. Uh, and, and adding a sprinkler system in a, in a parking garage, in a concrete structure, is, um, it, is maybe going a little, a little bit overboard. Other discussion. Alden Park. Chief, if, if you could help me as we're as we're doing definitions yes. from a, from the residential side, you know, our, our ordinance now is is all single family dwellings that, that exceed five thousand square feet of gross floor area. I'd just like to define I mean is and Ben it may be clearer to Ben, but I mean gross floor area, does that mean heated and cooled and garages and porches or I believe gross Gross, gross floor area is is in the list of uh, definitions that we want to add, but it's inside the outside walls. And then I think it, in the ordinance it also says excluding porches, uh, overhangs, uh, garages. And, and what we're after there is we don't want a sprinkler pipe over something that's not heated. Right. We don't want something right. to freeze and then create. We're, fi we're, we're helping one problem, but we're creating another. Right. And, and that's part of the issue with the parking garage, is we don't want to stick pipes out that are going to be subject to freezing. Further discussion? Mr. Mayor, the reason I wanted it brought off uh, the consent was, and I am in support of this, but one of the main reasons is just, you know, when we get these right here, and anytime we're trying to start to amend ordinances or draft ordinances or anything like that, we call for a public hearing. I know we did it with Sunday sales. We call for a public hearing before a final ordinance or even a proposed ordinance has been written and anything we can review and all I get here is just you know two pages of, of uh, stuff dealing with the fire ordinances that you know that's kind of why I want this brought off to see exactly what we're proposing to change here in this and, and what you're saying is just basically dealing with the hospital parking garage but you know that's something maybe we just need to talk about later when we start drafting and amending ordinances is, is have something that we as the mayor and the board of aldermen can look at before we call for a public hearing because if you wait until the night that we have the public hearing here in two weeks, and this probably won't be the issue, but a greater issue than this it may pop up, like Sunday says, is have the public the opportunity to look at something before, give them a week to study it, you know, two weeks to study it, and then especially us. But oftentimes we'll do that. We, I think it's been two or three times so far in this term, we've called for a public hearing on something that we haven't even seen as a board of what we're calling. And so if we consented this tonight, we wouldn't have ever known, I wouldn't have known anyway. I haven't had an opportunity to talk to you this week as to what, you know, what we were, you know, dealing with. So that's just, that's kind of why I wanted to talk about this tonight, but I am in support of this. Further discussion? Any further discussion? Need a motion. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I move approval. Alderman Dumas has moved approval of the calling of a public hearing for the purpose of amending the City of Starkville Sprinkler Ordinance 2007-4 in the Code of Ordinances, Chapter 58, Fire Prevention and Protection, Article 3, Automatic Fire Suppression Systems. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion's been seconded by Alderman Corbin. Alderman Dumas, you wish to speak on the merits? I do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. The next matter on the agenda comes under building codes and planning, and it is the consideration of the approval of P&Z item number CU09-4. Mr. Griffin. Uh, Mayor and Board, the item CU09-04 is a request by Mr. Michael Cracker to allow residential use in a C2 general business zoning district. The subject property is located at 403 Highway 182 East in Ward 5 and will affect approximately 0.38 acres of land. A colorized package has been provided by the applicant and has been placed at your seats this evening for your reference. <clears throat> the applicant is proposing to build a single 10-unit condominium building which will not exceed the 45-foot maximum height allowed in residential zoning districts. The applicant submitted a similar request in November of 2006 which was denied by the Planning and Zoning Commission. 
The second request was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission in July of 2008, which was then denied by the Board of Aldermen. The applicant has since revised his conceptual plan by reducing the number of buildings from two to one, reducing the number of proposed residential units from 12 to 10, and included a fence and green area at the northern property <coughs> line to screen and buffer the adjacent properties. The applicant has provided a letter detailing his intentions along with a conceptual site plan, photographs, and additional materials supporting his request. That's the colorized packet y'all have at y'all seats. Ten property owners of record within 160 feet of the subject property were notified directly by mail of the request. <coughs> a public hearing notice was published in the November 13th edition of the Startwell Daily News and a placard was posted on the site concurrent with the notice. The planning office has had contact with one adjacent property owner regarding the conditional use request and his concerns were chiefly regarding stormwater runoff. <coughs> Excuse me, the staff report outlines the applicant's compliance with the five criteria regarding conditional uses. Planning staff recommended eight conditions of approval. One of these conditions requires a complete site plan review and approval by the city's development review committee, which would address specific development issues such as stormwater management. The Planning and Zoning Commission added a condition to relocate <coughs> the parking at the, to the rear of the building, and if this is not possible, to separate the front parking area from the street and sidewalk by use of architectural features. This condition is identified with double underlines near the middle of page four of the staff report. One adjacent property owner spoke in favor of the request, and the applicant provided letters of support from three others. The Planning and Zoning Commission voted unanimously to recommend approval of the request with a total of nine conditions, and draft meeting minutes have been provided in the packet for your review. Questions, comments from the board? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to, um, <clears throat> first off, I'd like to commend Mr. Uh, Mr. Cracker. I think, you know, he's gone through this process twice already, and, um, and I think this is a process of working with a neighbor that was, uh, I would say very adamantly opposed to the process to begin with, but now uh, through Mr. Cracker's working, actually had the, the same landowner come in uh, far, and, and voiced his approval for the same project during the last process. So I, I think this is, uh, I commend him for that. I look forward to having this in Ward 5 and, uh, and I move approval. Alderman Dumas has moved approval of PNZ item number CU0904, a conditional use request by Mr. Michael Cracker to allow residential use in a C2 general business zoning district located at 403 Mississippi Highway 182 in Ward 5. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Mr. Mayor, that's second. That's with all the nine conditions. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, yes with nine conditions. Uh, Alderman Dumas has made the motion, uh, it, it, as stated previously, with uh, the nine conditions provided by staff. By staff. Second. And Alderman Perkins second. has seconded. Uh, Alderman Dumas, you wish to speak on the mayor? I do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Major clearly passed. Thank you, Mayor. And just as an announcement, it, it doesn't look like we're going to have a Planning and Zoning Commission meeting in January, and that'll be notified and through the proper uh, means and methods. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Uh, the next matters before us come from the Engineering and Streets Department. Mr. Kemp. Good evening, Mayor and Board. Um, we took bids this morning on our American Recovery and Reinvestment Act projects. Uh, included in the in the revised uh, agenda item on your table um, is a bid tabulation as well as a recommendation letter from the consultant. Um, we had three bids: uh, Superior, Asphalt, Falcon Contracting, and APAC. And looking at the bid tabs, they were all very close. Uh, I think that they're good bids, and they're also um, considerably less than we had anticipated. So we're we're very pleased with that. Uh, Falcon Contracting out of Columbus was the lowest bidder, and um, it's our recommendation to approve them as the lowest and best uh, bidder. All right. Um, and the, uh, the, the first matter before you from Engineering and Streets is the request for authorization to accept the lowest uh, bid on the project. Uh, do we hear any uh, questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, I move that uh, the city accept the lowest and the most responsive bid from Falcon Construction for the AARP project, um, continually approved by Mississippi Department of Transportation. 
Alderman Perkins has made a motion to accept the lowest and most responsive bid for the ARRA project contingent on the approval by MDOT. Alderman Perkins, that's your motion? From Falcon, yes, sir. From Falcon. Uh, okay, so just, just for clarification, uh, motion is to accept the lowest and most responsive bid for the ARRA project contingent upon the approval by MDOT from Falcon Contracting. Yes, sir, the motion. Yes. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion's been seconded by Alderman Parker. Alderman Perkins, do you wish to speak on there? No, sir. Discussion. Uh, is like the, the, est the estimate that you had, is that what we were approved to spend? Yes. You know, this is America, this is recovery. Right. Money. Right. The so. uh, consultant, Neil Schaefer, uh, developed the uh, engineering estimate. Um, and it was, we, we had to submit this to MDOT as part of the, their approval of the plans. That, I think where you're going is what do we do with the extra money, and that's going to come up in the third agenda item. Um, just, we're going to try to spend it. Okay. Further discussion? Further discussion on all of them, purchase motion. Further discussion? Further discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Mm -hmm. Measure Miller passes. Uh, and the next matter you have before you is a request for authorization from Mayor Wiseman to sign a letter to MDOT requesting concurrence for the ARRA project. Mr. Right. Uh, this is the, the requirement from MDOT. If, if the city chooses to select a contractor, we now re require MDOT to concur with our, with our selection. They do a very thorough uh, review process of all the bids, make sure they meet federal and uh, state requirements. Um, so that would be the next step. This is for the same roadway project? Yeah, the same project. That's yep. all my question. Yep. Discussion. Uh, Discussion from the board. Move approval. Alderman Dumas has made a motion to authorize Mayor Wiseman to sign a letter to MDOT requesting concurrence for the ARRA project. Alderman Dumas, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Corey. Alderman Dumas, do you wish to speak on the merits? Do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Member <clears throat> clearly passes. Next matter on the agenda is the request for authorization for the mayor to sign a memorandum of understanding to MDOT to initiate a new project under the ARRA. Mr. Kemp. It would seem logical that if we had extra money that we could simply expand the scope of our project, but with MDOT and Federal Highway, that's not allowed. Therefore, we have to start a new project uh, with our remaining funds, and that's what um, I'm asking tonight. And again, I apologize on late notice. We, we just realized that we had, I guess, a good problem to have when we had the bids come in so, so low. But essentially, we have about $415,000 um, available to spend. We will obviously need to move quickly. Um, the the, the, um, the the projects that have already been approved, you know, we will continue to, to chip away at that list. And um, uh, essentially, we're starting a new project just for, you know, to spend the, those dollars. The same, it would be at the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act project. And Mr. Kemp, I think I can speak for all of us when I say you can feel free to bring an extra $415,000 <laughs> to meeting any time. Uh, any discussion? Um, is, is there a list of the next set of roadway to be covered with the remaining funds? Um, yes, there is, and I'll be happy to, to uh, provide that email uh, and, you, and provide it to the board. Can you shoot that uh, to everybody? I think that the I think that the the, the last roadway that got cut uh, that didn't make it on this one was Louisville Street. Um, so we would go back to that list of that 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 those roads that got eliminated and, and uh, build that list back. Were okay. these roads prior, prioritized by yes. the previous board? Yes, they were. Alden Sister. Will, will that include sidewalks on Louisville Street? No, no. And it's uh, the section of Louisville from Academy South. Okay. Uh, the set, that other section uh, still working on the stip. Okay. Uh, Is that from Academy South to Industrial Park? Yes. Okay. Or, or as far as we can take it. Yes, sir. The, uh, yes, sir. Depending on the funds. Yes, sir. Further discussion? Any further discussion? We made it through. Almost a year and a half. I mean, we made it through all of year one on the stimulus funding, or, or the stimulus projects, didn't we? Or am I confusing that with the city project? Well, we, we, removed, we removed some projects of priority one and two.
to put them on the stimulus projects because they were eligible for those funding. <coughs> and then what we were able to do is spend local overlay monies on some of the priority two. So we made, we made a significant dent in the priority two in year one by, since we pulled some of these roads off. Okay. Further discussion? Mr. Mayor, I move approval. Alderman Dumas <clears throat> has made a motion to authorize the mayor to sign a memorandum of understanding to MDOT to initiate a new project under the American Recovery Reinvestment Act in order to expend the remaining funds on previously approved federal routes. Alderman Dumas, that's your motion. It is. Go ahead, a second. Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Perkins. Alderman Dumas, you wish to speak on the merits? Do not. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. And the next matters we have before us are personnel matters. Uh, first matter is a request for approval to promote Mandy Wilson and Crystal Hackett to police officers and to hire James Joyner, Christopher Kennard, Franklin Wells, and Joshua Buckner as police officers. Mr. Boyd. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Board. And I apologize that we weren't able to have the names to you earlier in the process, but we did not finish the selection process until very late in the day on Friday, so your packets had already gone out. Um, <clears throat> we currently have four vacant positions in the police department. These have all been created by uh, uh, people who have left our service. Uh, we have one position that is a new position that's funded through a newly approved DUI grant. And we have one upcoming uh, vacancy in January uh, that will be due to uh, a retirement in the department. Uh, in our applicant pool that we had, as we went through the selection process, we did identify uh, six candidates that we felt were very worthy, deserving, and qualified for the positions. Um, we're bringing those to you uh, tonight. Two of the candidates are internal candidates that are uh, currently dispatchers, Mandy Wilson and Crystal Hackett. We're recommending their promotion to police officers. And then the uh, remaining uh, positions, we have three uh, that we're recommending that we hire uh, effective immediately. Those are James Joyner, uh, Christopher Kennard, and Franklin Wells. And then we're recommending uh, that the other candidate be hired starting January 15th, concurrent with the retirement <coughs> in the department. And, and that would be uh, uh, Mr. Joshua Buckner. So that is our recommendation to you. Mr. Mayor, may we recommend it? Alderman Perkins. Uh, Mr. Boyd, where uh, was the advertisement done for these positions? What newspapers or areas was the advertising done? Uh, it was done in Starkville, Columbus, which is consistent with what we have been doing. And um, how many uh, applicants do we have for these positions? Um, for the uh, for the new ones? The, the we four. had... And, and additionally, that was posted on our website. And I will tell you that we had candidates from as far away as Texas that were applying for the positions. We had a total of, I believe it was 38 uh, applicants that applied for the positions. Um, we had, um, I don't have all the data exactly in front of me. There were about six of those that uh, failed a preliminary uh, background check. Uh, we had, uh, uh, I think it was 32 that were invited for the physical testing and uh, everything. About We had about six that did not show up for that testing. Uh, we had, as we went through the physical testing, we had three that failed the, uh, the physical testing. We had a total of uh, 19 candidates that made it as far as taking the written testing. Uh, of those 19, 12 passed, we had additionally three people who were already certified officers. They don't have to take the written test. So we had a total of 15 candidates that were interviewed, that reached the point of interview, and uh, 
uh, background checks and were interviewed. What period of time uh, did we do the advertising for these uh, the officers? This was approved by the board on October the 15th. We advertised uh, uh, shortly after that, as soon as we could get it in the paper. We had a little bit of a delay. We had some uh, internal folks that were involved in the selection process that uh, were unavailable to participate in the um, selection, so we were delayed uh, a few weeks in setting up the testing, but it was approved by the board for advertising on October the 15th. Now you mentioned that we're going to fill one position January 15th based on um, intended vacancy. Um, yes, sir. So um, is the intended vacancy is going to be an officer level position that we're fixing to fill? We, we will fill it at the bottom. There will be later uh, pr internal promotions uh, that will you know that that will result from advertising and, and the uh, promotion process but we will have you know ultimately through the process of vacancy at at a police officer position i know in the past uh, several meetings ago the board um, went ahead and authorized to advertise to fill in intended vacancy <coughs> so are we going to advertise to fill the intended vacancy for the position that will be created on the 15th of January 2010? I would not see us needing to re-advertise for that position. These are, are vacancies that are still uh, inherent and anticipated from that initial advertising. And, and uh, 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 you know, I, I, we're trying to take advantage <coughs> of, uh, you know, going through the selection process one time, letting that do it, rather than coming back in January and having to go through again. It's the position that's going to be uh, vacated on uh, January 15, 2010. Is that going to be a supervisory position, or is that going to be a, uh, just entry-level position? The person retiring is in a supervisory position. So, so there, will be, there will be, following that, uh, a promotional process at some point in time and uh, uh, Chief Lindley has not identified exactly when we will go forward with that promotional process we'll come to you and ask permission to, to fill internally those those promotion positions so as personnel officer for the city of Stark is it your understanding that the that the board is going to be asked to advertise to fill that that supervisory level position that's going to be vacated on the 15th of January 2010 uh, at some point in time, and I'm, I am not saying it'll be on January 15th, no, no, no. but at some point in time, we will need to go through a promotional process. So you're telling me that I'm not saying it'll be filled on January 15, 2010, but it's your understanding as personnel officer that that position will, in fact, be filled, that supervisor level position. Chief, I, I, I hate, let, let me okay. defer that to. Okay. Chief, Chief Langer, that's the only question that I have. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's the only thing, answer I want uh, is that the supervisor, you heard the discussion, the yes. supervisor level position that's going to be vacated on the 15th day of January 2010, do you intend to recommend to the board for that position to be filled anytime soon? Probably not. Here's why. I intend to, first of all, I intend to leave the right structure as it is. At some point next year, uh, we will do as we always do, take advertisements for promotions. Um, when AC retires, I'll work with my existing staff and we'll get comfortable and see at which point we will try and go ahead. Right now, I need uh, lower and middle level supervisors critically more so than anything else. I have sergeant and lieutenant's positions that are open. Thank you, Chief. One last question to you, Chief. Chief, one last question before you leave. Yes, sir. Once that position, just so I understand that it's an alderman, once that position is vacated on January 15th of 2010, assuming that's the date, who will be uh, the, the person in charge of your department? Uh, if you are uh, away from the board, away from the meeting, away from the city, who, who will be the person sure. in charge? Of that um, department. That, that's a good question. All right. Based on your current uh, organizational structure. Right. The way that works is uh, whoever is not here, the most senior, 
highest ranking person is next in charge. And just so I know who that would be. Chain. That would be Captain Thomas, okay. right. who has a uh, ranking grade and yes, seniority. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and then it would be Captain Nichols. Okay. I just want to make sure I, I know who to talk to in yes. case. Uh, no, Chris communication. would be second, Frank would be third. Yes, sir. And right now, currently, it's me, AC, Chris, and Frank. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Alden Ball. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mr. Bard, on these all these uh, all these applicants right here, is they replacing someone? Are these just new hires, or what is going on? All are replacements except for one position. We have one position that's funded by a uh, newly approved DUI grant. So one of these vacancies will be one of these incumbents will be uh, filling that position. The other, uh, we have four current vacancies from people who have left and the one upcoming in January from a retirement. May I ask, what was the reason these leaving? I thought we had said at okay. one meeting that we we would okay. be notified why they are leaving. What, what was the reason of these Okay. Uh, we had um, uh, one person uh, that left to accept a, a position uh, in Afghanistan with a private uh, uh, security business at uh, uh, considerably more money than what we could dream of paying. We had uh, one uh, position that uh, we had a, a person leave to accept a job at the federal government letter level <coughs> considerably higher than uh, our uh, pay structure. Um, we had one position where an officer has resigned to move out of the area for personal reasons, uh, not work-related. And then we have one position where we had to terminate uh, an officer in their probationary period for uh, unacceptable level of performance. That's the four current vacancies. The upcoming January will be a retirement. Further discussion? Further discussion? We have no motion pending. Further discussion? Alderman uh, Court. Um, Mayor, I move that we approve the uh, request to promote Mandy Wilson and Crystal Hackett to police officers and hire James Joyner, Christopher Kennard, Franklin Wells, Joshua Buckner as police officers as recommended by city staff. Alderman McCory has moved to approve the request to promote Mandy Wilson and Crystal Hackett to police officers and to hire James Joyner, Christopher Kennard, Franklin Wells, and Joshua Buckner as police officers. Alderman McCory, is that your motion? It is. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Parker. Alderman McCory, you must speak on that. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. All right. Uh, this measure passes uh, and we'll move to the next order of business, which is a request for the approval to advertise for a driver foreman in the sanitation department. Mr. Boyd. Yes, we have uh, a, a current employee that is a driver foreman who is retiring effective January 15th, same date as the police retirement. <coughs> uh, and we're requesting to fill that, that position of a driver foreman. Um, we're requesting to advertise at this point in time. Uh, this may seem a little uh, premature as far as advertising this quickly, but if we look at it in our, with our process, if, we, if this measure is approved tonight, uh, we, it will be Sunday before we can start our advertising. We advertise for seven working days, so that would put our advertising going through December 31st. Uh, with that time frame, we would not be able to get this back to the board for approval at your next meeting, which will be January 5th. So that will put us on January 19th before we can get back to you uh, with a recommendation for hiring on the position. If we wait until January 5th 
to start the advertising, then we're looking at February before we could uh, be able to bring a recommendation to you for hiring. So that's our reason for going forward to try to to try to be able to uh, fill this concurrently with the uh, uh, with the retirement uh, of the incumbent, Mr. Mayor. Alden Burke. Yeah, my concern on this is that I, I fail to. Um, understand why we want to advertise for a driver slash foreman. It seemed like we would just advertise for the uh, driver and maybe uh, promote to a foreman. I, you know, I just don't understand the logic of this, the, the way the position is done or is that how we've been doing? Or It's it's the way the position has been structured. You, you have uh, a person who is a driver and, and working foreman combination, one person doing both functions uh, and we have, you know, anytime we're looking at promotions, we, we do advertise those so that internal candidates who, who are interested can apply. So, you know, this may work very well be an internal candidate that winds up being recommended for the job. But is, is the job description written up like this driver foreman? Yes, it will be written as a driver foreman. And this has, has it has currently been done? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's the current way the position is classified. And Ms. Brewer, that meets with your understanding as well? Yes, sir. Okay. I have nothing further, Mr. Mayor. Further question. You Alden said Bob. that y'all might be fulfilled with inside the department. I, I'm sorry, You sir. said that y'all might be fulfilled with inside the department instead of going outside. We won't know that until we see who applies for the, for the position, all of them, but internal uh, applicants go through the same <coughs> process. Uh, uh, you know, we, we advertise internal candidates as well as external candidates can apply, and then we look uh, and, and go through the selection process at that point in time uh, with the goal of selecting the best qualified candidate for the position. Mr. Mayor, one last question. And Mr. Boyd, in accordance with the, um, the newly revised court approved employment <coughs> uh, process of the city, uh, you all ensure, the, the staff ensure uh, in your office that uh, we advertise internally basically for the same amount of time that we do yes. externally yes, sir. and we commence at the same time period. Yes, sir. And we post the notices internally in, in conspicuous and noticeable places in accordance with our policy and procedures. Yes, sir. Mayor. Further discussion? Alden Park. Would the advertisement require, uh, I mean, it, you have to have a CDL license to drive this particular truck. So would it Correct. would the advertisement require them to already have the CDL or is that something yes. that they could, so they already have to have the CDL license right. to, to even apply? To well, I mean, to, be not, considered. to be considered. You know, they, right. they can apply without right. it, but but to be selected they would have to meet our qualifications, which <coughs> includes a CDL. Part of it. Okay. Yeah. Alden Carp. Just for general knowledge, is there a preference given to when you have an advertiser preference given to internal candidates versus external? Or is it a level the, playing field? Or? The level playing, select the best qualified candidate. Mr. Mayor, may I just say one thing? At, at one time, we're under the manner decree, uh, the internal applicants will get preference, but now uh, both the internal and external have been given the same weight. That's my understanding of the process right. that was in place when I started. Right. Yes. Further discussion? Further discussion by the board? Mayor, I move that we, we approve an advertisement for a driver foreman for the sanitation department as recommended by city personnel. Alderman Sistrock has moved the approval to advertise for a driver foreman for the sanitation department. Alderman Sistrock, is at your motion? Yes. Go ahead, second. 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 Motion has been seconded by Alderman Parker. Alderman Sistrock, you will speak on the merits. No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Magic will look bad. Thank you. All right. Uh, next matter on the agenda is a closed determination of executive session. Without objection, I'm going to move us into a brief recess. Is there any objection to moving into a brief recess? An objection, any objection, seeing none. Move. The passage of time. We have shared your joy at the birth of your children, and proudly we have watched them grow. We've taken care of your health care needs during the good times and the not so good. Your parents and grandparents have depended upon us. Together we have shared the struggles and the wonders of life. At Octibaha County Hospital, 
we are celebrating 30 years of being your lifelong choice in healthcare.